a hypothetical astronomical object called Nemesis, or more accurately a red dwarf or brown dwarf star, orbits the Sun at a distance of roughly 50,000 to 100,000 astronomical units just outside the Oort cloud. The existence of this star was first proposed as a potential explanation for cycles of mass extinction throughout Earth's history. Paleontologists David Ropp and Jack Sipkowski asserted in a 1984 essay that they had used various types of time series analysis to discover a statistical pattern in the 250 million year history of major extinctions. The two scientists identified 12 extinction events in the time period under consideration, focusing on the intensity of fossil families of marine vertebrates, invertebrates, and protozoa. It was calculated that there were 26 million years on average between extinction episodes. To date, two of the extinction events known, Cretaceous Tertiary and Late Eocene, could be tied to events of significant impact. Although though Ropp and Sepkowski were unable to pinpoint the origins of their purported periodicities, they surmised that these occurrences might be connected to extraterrestrial life. Several astronomers have struggled to locate a non-terrestrial mechanism. Widmeyer and Jackson and the Davis Hutt and Muller team independently presented analogous theories in the journal Nature in 1984 to explain the catastrophic extinctions proposed by Ropp and Sepkowski. One of these theories suggests that the Sun may have an unidentified companion star in a very wide elliptical orbit. This companion star's periodic perturbations of the Oort cloud would increase the amount of comets heading towards the core of our solar system and solar system increasing any repercussions on Earth as a result. This hypothetical star is called Nemesis, or Death Star as it was quickly nicknamed by the media, Star of Death, the name of the Star Wars Death Star. Even with the knowledge that such a star exists, it is still unclear what Nemesis exactly is. While Daniel P. Whitmire and Albert A. Jackson contend that the object is a brown dwarf, Richard A. Muller contends that it is most likely a red dwarf with a magnitude of 7 to 12. 84% of solar type stars, according to earlier studies, are in a binary system. Saul Perlmutter, an astronomer who at the time worked at the Luskner Observatory Telescope at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, was hired by Muller to find Nemesis after Perlmutter completed his thesis on astronomical research of a stellar companion of the Sun in 1986, but was unable to find it. Muller determines that Nemesis is located in the Hydra constellation and that the last major extinction event occurred approximately 5 million years ago. Muller's estimate of Nemesis' distance from Earth is based on the observation of long, atypical comet periods that correspond to an orbital arc that fits the criteria of Muller's hypothesis. If Nemesis existed, it might be identified by next-generation astronomical observatories, and if it were a brown dwarf, as postulated by Dr. Dan Whitmire and Albert A. Jackson IV, then the WISE mission, which began on December 14, 2009, could easily find it. Matisse and Whitman hypothesized that the solar system's oscillation across the Milky Way's plane might be what's causing the putative periodic extinction. The gravitational disruptions caused by these oscillations could have the same effects as those predicted by Nemesis' potential orbit. The oscillation period, however, is not readily observed and may be up to 40% longer than the 26 million years required by the theory. Outside Neptune's orbit, planetoids have been seen since 2000. One of these is 148209-2000 CR105, which has a highly elliptical orbit and a high perihelion value that rule out Neptune's influence on it. Invoked in these situations is typically the remote prospect of gas giants or stars passing through the solar system's outermost regions, in our case it could coincide with Nemesis. Nemesis has started to have an impact on literature as well. Science fiction author Isaac Amov has written a book specifically on this star. Even though there are certain factual mistakes, the brown dwarfs or red dwarfs disasters are overstated, and the star is not described as the sun's companion. Talking about Nemesis is still a fascinating subject. The Greek goddess Nemesis is the source of the name Nemesis. 
Greek mythology's nemesis is a goddess who generates an egg that is collected and given to Leda, from which Elena and the Diosteri will emerge. She is sometimes described as the daughter of Zeus, but others believe she is the product of ocean and night and was later possessed by Zeus in the temple of Ramnut. She was known as the distribution of justice in Greek mythology, justice as it was understood by the legal system was instead given to the goddess Dicha. Nemesis was particularly concerned with enforcing justice for unresolved or unpunished crimes, dispersing and infusing joy or sorrow in accordance with what was right, and specifically pursuing the wicked and the ungrateful to fate. The current Iastitia, who was depicted holding scales in her hand and wearing a blindfold, is the goddess of jurisdiction in the Roman religion. Nonetheless, the Romans erected an altar to Nemesis atop the capital, where the soldiers were, where they would lay down their swords before going to battle. Nemesis is a red dwarf that Eugenia Insigna, an astronomer who lives on Rotor, one of the colonies established by the Earth, by chance discovered in Isaac Asimov's science fiction book Nemesis. Nemesis is nearly invisible, very close to the sun, 2.5 light years, and on a collision course with the solar system. The researcher turns right away to Janice Pitt, a prominent Rotarian, who commands her to keep quiet about this astounding finding. Pitt aspires to establish a new civilization that is separate from his home planet and has the potential to rule even the entire galaxy. Eugenia is compelled to keep her finding a secret from everyone, even her husband Kral Fisher, despite her reluctance due to her pride in being an astronomer. This does not stop the astronomer from being given the option of naming the newly discovered star Nemesis, which is a nod to the Greek goddess of justice. All stars would be born in binary or multiple systems, according to research from Harvard University and the University of California, Berkeley, and as a result, our sun should likewise have had a twin. The researchers, led by theoretical physicist Steven Stoller and radio astronomer Sarah Satavoy, who works with Hubble for NASA at the esteemed Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, have essentially abandoned the theory of Nemesis, the cyclical bad twin of the Sun that would periodically reappear at the edge of the solar system every 27 million years. According to certain studies, many of which were carried out in the late 1980s, the star is given this ugly name because of the gravitational force it would exert on deadly comets that may strike the planets of the solar system, including our Earth. Although there is no proof, Nemesis would be to blame for the unsettling cyclical cycle of mass extinctions that have been witnessed on our planet. 64 million years ago, in the late Cretaceous, non-avian dinosaurs and other animal species would die extinct due to an asteroid borne by Nemesis. So let's return to the investigation that gave this speculative theory new life. According to research on the Perseus molecular cloud, which is regarded as a true cradle for stars in formation, scientists have discovered that stars do not form in a solitary fashion. The cloud, which is 600 light years away from Earth, has had multiple young class zero stars, less than 500,000 years old, and class one stars, less than a million years old, scanned inside of it by the Van Dam mission. Combining this data with other observations, the researchers discovered 19 binary systems, 5 multiple systems, and 45 lone stars. Satavoy and colleagues concluded that all of the stars originated from binary or multiple systems after analyzing their distances, locations, and distribution using a mathematical model. Professor Stoller emphasized that solar-type stars are the result of the breakup of binary systems rather than being the origin of stars. The Sun's twin is thought to be concealed somewhere in the Milky Way's core at a distance of three light days, or roughly 500 UA, astronomical units, the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Nemesis, although being its designated twin, may actually be a feeble brown dwarf that has been diminished by the Sun, which during its accretion phases would have mostly robbed it of its dust and gas. Although no proof of its existence has ever been discovered, some believe it can be deduced from the odd orbit of the dwarf planet Sedna, which is affected by the gravitational pull of a mysterious celestial object. 
Following research on a molecular cloud, a type of interstellar cloud where the density and temperature allow the formation of hydrogen molecules starting from single hydrogen atoms in the constellation of Perseus, astronomers Stephen Stoller of the University of Berkeley and Sarah Satavoy of Harvard University have discovered new elements that would support the hypothesis that Nemesis may exist. The results of the study were published in the Royal Astronomical Society's academic publication. The two astronomers' study of data about the Perseus cloud, a massive cloud of gas and dust 600 light-years from Earth, was based on information gathered between 2013 and 2015 by the Very Large Array, a collection of radio telescopes in New Mexico that allowed for the imaging of star formations within the cloud. Stoller and Satavoy used mathematical models to conduct a real census of the single and double stars of Perseus, finding that there are 55 young stars, of which 45 are lone stars, 19 are binary systems, and 5 are multiple ones. They combined these data with those that came from another study referred to the Gould's Belt, a partial ring of stars that extends for about 3,000 light years. Studies have concentrated on low-mass stars, such as the Sun or smaller, to determine whether it is typical for two or more stars to form binary or multiple systems when they are born together. Astronomical investigations throughout the years have revealed that systems created by two or more stars are actually quite frequent, especially among stars with massive masses. Hence, scientists have long pondered whether they originated in this manner or whether they were distinct stars that later united due to gravitational attraction. The two scientists deduced from their research that all stars of low mass, or those like the Sun, were created in binary or multiple systems from which they separated in 60% of instances. The Nemesis star, which has been theorized to exist for nearly 30 years and which should be, according to some calculations, at roughly 500 AU, astronomical units that the Earth-Sun distance from the Sun follows, making it extremely likely that our Sun was also born with at least one twin star. Unfortunately, this is merely circumstantial evidence, and additional research on other clouds will be required to confirm the true efficacy of the mathematical model. Nonetheless, the ideas regarding the Sun's twin are once again brought to light in the meantime. You can help us create better products by giving us a like and pressing the bell. Thanks and see you again soon.